In this video, I'll be discussing two worked examples on Faraday's law. This video is part of a playlist of videos on electromagnetic induction and directly follows the previous video in which we discussed Faraday's law. To follow this video and get the most out of it, you need to have some familiarity with Faraday's law. So if you don't, I recommend you check out the previous video first. Let's take a look at the first worked example. In the previous video, we explored the various factors that determine the induced EMF that develops when a magnet is moved towards a coil of wire. For example, increasing the speed at which the magnet is moved leads to a greater induced EMF. One thing we didn't look at is what happens if we push the magnet right through the coil. So let's do that. Notice anything interesting? For some reason, when the middle of the magnet moves through the coil, the current stops flowing and the lamp stops glowing. This is the first puzzle we want to solve. So our first worked example is, with reference to the bar magnet and Faraday's law of induction, explain why there is little or no induced current in the coil when the middle of the magnet moves through the coil. Why not pause the video and see if you can figure this out for yourself? When you're done, unpause the video and we'll go through the answer. Okay, welcome back. So we know that the magnetic field lines outside a bar magnet are directed from north to south and are non-uniform. Inside the magnet, however, the field lines are directed from south to north and are basically uniform as shown. So the field lines are shown in black. So when the middle of the magnet passes through the coil during a time interval delta t, there's virtually no change in the magnetic flux density at the coil. What this little sketch here is showing is the magnet being pushed through over a little time interval delta t. I haven't actually drawn the magnet for clarity, but what you can see is the magnetic field lines, right, which correspond to the magnetic field line in the interior or the middle of the magnet. And as I mentioned, because it's effectively a uniform field, as the magnet kind of pushes through the coil, there's virtually no change in the magnetic field or magnetic flux density in the coil over this period of time, delta t. So what this means is that there is no change in the flux linkage. Remember that flux linkage is given by the product of n, the number of turns of wire, times phi, the magnetic flux through an area or coil. And n is constant, there's no change to that, of course, and phi, the flux, is also constant because the flux density isn't changing, b isn't changing, and the area through which it acts or passes through, a, is also unchanging. So there's no change in flux linkage here. And so from Faraday's law, which states that the induced EMF is given by the negative rate of change of flux linkage, we can see that the induced EMF must be zero if there is no change in flux linkage. And this is what explains why there's little or no induced current in the coil when the middle of the magnet passes through the coil. Let's now take a look at our second worked example. The magnetic flux density through a coil of wire changes over 4.0 seconds, as shown below. Calculate the average induced EMF that develops in the coil as a result. So, once again, we've got a coil of wire, but this time it's rectangular or square shaped, as shown here. We're told the area of the coil of wire, 0.010 meters squared. You're also told the number of turns of wire in the coil, it's 50 turns. And you can see there's a magnetic field, you can see these magnetic field lines poking through this area, shown in black. And we're told the flux density, the magnitude of the flux density, 0.10 tesla. And what happens is that over the course of four seconds, this flux density changes, changes direction as you can see. Right, so there's no change to the magnitude of the flux density, but obviously a big change in direction. And note here, these angles are 30 degrees here and here as well. So once again, I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can answer this yourself. And once you've had a go at that, unpause the video and we'll go through it. Okay, welcome back. So to figure out the induced EMF, we're going to have to, of course, work out how the flux linkage changes over the course of four seconds. So we need to work out the initial flux linkage. 
And to do that, of course, we need to work out n times the initial flux, which is represented by phi t equals zero. And this initial flux is just given by the component of the flux density parallel to the normal. And so that's given by B cosine 30 multiplied by the area of the car through which the field lines are poking through. Now we also need to figure out the flux linkage through the coil 4.0 seconds later. And essentially it's the same procedure, except we need to be a little bit careful about the angle we have to use. The angle we have to use now is 30 degrees plus 180 degrees here. Okay, so that's the angle that the field lines or the flux density makes with the normal now is now 210 degrees. It's sort of like the angle of interest is the angle between the direction in which the field lines are pointing and the direction in which the normal is pointing. So once we've established that, the flux linkage through the coil then is just n times b times cosine 210 degrees times a. Now once we have these two things figured out, we can of course work out the change in flux linkage, which is just the flux linkage at 4 seconds minus the flux linkage at the start. And if you take out a common factor of NBA, we can get this expression here. And we know that the change takes place over 4.0 seconds. So if we put all of this together, we can work out the induced EMF that develops via Faraday's law. So if you just plug in all the numbers here and you work out the change in flux linkage divided by the time, and if you take the minus sign into account, uh, you should get an induced EMF of 0.022 volts. And we're working to two significant figures here because all the info given to us is to two significant figures. Another useful way of understanding what's going on here is to represent the change in flux linkage graphically. In other words, we can consider a graph of flux linkage versus time. And if the flux linkage changes in a linear fashion, then of course we can draw a straight line to represent this change here. And so the connection between Faraday's law stated here and this graph is that the gradient of this graph is basically equal to, or is equal rather, to the change in flux linkage divided by the time taken for the change. So it's, it's really important to appreciate that whenever you see a flux linkage versus time graph, the gradient effectively is, gonna, is what's going to give you the induced EMF, apart from this minus sign here, which you have to take into account. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it, subscribe to the Forest Learn channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening, and I hope to see you soon.